Hey everybody, it's Muscle Car Campy. We're back at Iron Stable Garage in Largo, Florida. And even though it's not a Mopar only shop, it seems like we're in Mopar heaven today. We got this gorgeous, gorgeous Petty Blue 440 Superbird behind me, the king of cars, the 71 Cuda convertible. We've got all kinds of greatness here. We've got another Superbird over there. We've got a 70 Coronet 500 over here. What really attracted us today, of all the cars, we came here for the Rusty Krusty Charger, a 71 Charger SE, originally ordered with a 383, four barrel, and a torque flight. It's a two owner car, and Chris Brown, the owner of Iron Stable Garage, is gonna restore this car in stages, and we're gonna follow along for the ride. It has been sitting since 1987 but he knew the original owner. We have original ET slips for the car. There's a wonderful, wonderful story here, and we're gonna dive into it in many stages. Before we get started, don't forget, hit the subscribe button and ring that bell up top so you're notified every time a new video goes live. Check this out, you know, it's not just the car that's rusty and crusty. This is the original engine and transmission. I mean, big old torque flight, 383, Holly, everything here, even the front suspension, you could see how it was ordered. Front disc brakes, this is original nuts on the original shocks. What we're gonna do now is call over Chris Brown himself and we're gonna get into the nuts and bolts of this car and how he got it and what he's gonna do with it. Chris, you love all cars, you work on all cars, but this one is really special. You knew the original owner. He was an Air Force man who loaded bombs onto planes in Vietnam. How did you get to know the original owner? What was his name and what was he like? Well, Dave McGoy was our longtime friend for many, many years. And I came to know him through actually a local model car club. And we had very similar interest with, you know, the Mopar brand and things like that. I told him about my friend. I drove one of his vintage racing cars, the original Dan Gurney AAR Cuda. So he was excited about that. So a relationship began with, you know, model cars and full-size cars. And fast forward, David would crew chief and work with us on the vintage cars. And I also knew David had this special charger at home that he had ordered and bought brand new. So every time we worked and wrenched on the race car, he was telling me about, oh, I would write down, I want this and I want that. And he made a long list of the options he wanted on his charger and eventually ordered this Dodge Charger and uh, had it for many, many years. Used it as a daily driver and had a blast with it. Well, there were a lot of cool things on this car. And again, it's so personalized. Mm -hmm. It was a 383 car, right? Mm -hmm. 383 Magnum. Yeah. It had a torque flight transmission, mm -hmm. leather interior. Yes. Uh, buckets, mm -hmm. but no console, mm -hmm. column shift, mm -hmm. tough wheel, mm -hmm. and my personal favorite part, the cassette tape recorder with the microphone, mm -hmm. you know, so he could dictate right. messages when yeah. he was driving the car. I yeah, mean, I that love was pretty that. fun. Uh, I wish I had some cassettes. I don't have any cassettes of his messages or fun he had back in the day. I wish he, we had something like that to listen to. So I do miss him. He's unfortunately no longer with us. He's been gone for several years. You know, Chris, one of the things I really dig about this car and what really makes every Charger, in my opinion, mm -hmm. the hidden headlight treatment. I know this was the first year you could get exposed headlights on a Charger because basically it took over the spot in the lineup of the, you know, the Coronet and everything else, but there's nothing like a car of this era with hidden headlights. And I noticed something a little different on this one. Dave added some little bit of uh, tape in here, didn't he? Into he did. The headlights. He added some personal touch to it. That's, uh, imagine a machine turned dash on a, you know, a race car back in the day. This was a simple application with some decal mm -hmm. and it's faded. It used to have a slight green hue to it. And uh, so if you're really close, you can see it, but it's really cool. A little something he did, just like the little hidden speaker he had down here by the headlights when they would picnic and they could play music through the front. And this is another one of my favorite parts. His wife was a smoker so he installed a cigarette lighter in the trunk so when she needed to light up she go in push the thing in pull it out light up her smoke and again don't have to stop the party there we go isn't that awesome that is a great story so that's just fun of the various things that's the way david's was uh, was all the time he was always creating fun around everybody you know adding the speakers and the various things to personalize the car and make it his now this car is a little bit darker 
than original. Mm -hmm. It was F7 green, which was a little bit lighter than yes. this. But he must have hit the side of the car and he had it repainted mm -hmm. a little bit darker green. Mm -hmm. It's almost like an F8 green now. It's a little yes. darker, but I like, you know, you gotta like green cars. You gotta like green cars. You gotta like green cars. Back in the air, there were a lot of earth tone colored cars back there with your coppers and browns and yes, greens like this. They're very popular. Um, you know, so were the new high impact colors on various cars. So Dave chose uh, the F7 and uh, when he had the minor repair done, he goes, let's go with the F8. Okay. So that's what he always told me when he would tell me the story uh, of changing the entire color a little bit, but they only painted the outside of the car. So engine bay, uh, door jams, trunk, all retain the original paint. Chris, under the hood here, there's a lot of uh, surface rust, nothing too major, mm -hmm. but I noticed uh, there was one repair done over on this side so far. Yeah, earlier this week, after we removed the engine and put it on the dolly over here, which we'll look at in a little bit, uh, what you see is all original equipment here, hoses, lines, vacuum lines, and things like that. So the front frame rail, it didn't ruin the structure of the car, had a little bit of bubble action there. So uh, our technician cleaned it out and we patched it up with metal and uh, skimmed it with a little uh, uh, paint to kind of preserve it for right now. So that's just the beginning stage of as I bring the car back to life, do some preservative work to it and take care of the topical rust for right now. Yeah, I mean, I'm just amazed, amazed at how its car is how old? Oh, 1971. Yes, 1971. 52 years old mm -hmm. and it has all this original equipment on it. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just like, like this thing never broke down. Nothing was replaced. Yeah. It's quite amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, but even certain things like under here, there's a how to rotate the headlights into place. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, factory stickers, everything about under here, it's like, you know, some people see an old car that's been sitting mm -hmm. for 22, 25 years. Right. I look at it and I'm like, it's, it's like finding a treasure chest. It is. It's like uh, doing an Indiana Jones archaeology. You take the car apart and you take, we take a lot of pictures. And this is just like when we take a customer's car apart. Of course, if this car was currently going to go through a full restoration, everything in the engine bay would be coming out. Some things will be coming out for service. You know, we're going to take care of brake lines. I want the car operational. So we're going to replace the master cylinder, uh, have the power brake booster rebuilt, and take care of things like that. So that's our goal is to kind of do a first stage of... Uh, Let's bring the car uh, back alive in a mechanical way first. That's cool. And, and take care of a few cosmetic repairs while we're free to do so. Why don't we check out that engine on Let's stand look at that 383 there. Magnum uh, David had fun with back in the day because he always told me he had a neighbor he lived next to and Dave would get up real early in the morning and leave like 5 or 5.15 in the morning and they would have a Saturday conversation. He goes, Dave, when you start that 383, I can hear my room in my bedroom vibrate. He goes, that thing always sounded so good. <laughs> and he did drag race it. In fact, mm -hmm. he drag raced it mm -hmm. at the Air Force Base in Myrtle Beach. He, he has, sure did. We found a treasure trove of ET slips yes. from when the car was basically brand new mm -hmm. all the way up to through 72 yeah. or so. Yeah. Well, I guess this an thing exciting was part of Dave, you know, he just he had a good time with the thing and, he, and didn't, he didn't ruin the car. No. He left the integrity of what Chrysler built and, you know, just kind of refined it a little bit and got acquainted to the car. The car broke in, it got faster and faster. And we'll see that on the ET slips. That'll this be is fun. very cool. Let's go check out the engine. All right, man, let's go see the old dirty motor. Chris, you pulled the whole front engine suspension everything out of here front mm -hmm. clips sitting here you pulled the valve covers off earlier uh, what did you discover with this car well as you can see it is a high mileage car this car is showing 112,000 miles on it right now so uh, as the car went through life and we're getting now into the late 80s you eventually had a transmission failure which happens you know cars wear out he uh, has a, a rebuilt transmission put back into the car and it's in service again for a little while and it too fails so then the car became driveway art and they would go out and start it once in a while. And you know, it's now approaching 1987 and intermittently doing that for a while. Uh, and after some time it quit starting, you know, probably fuel pump failure or something like that. It was never again started. So it was wow. just allowed to sit there and be yard art. And that was not too many years after that when I met David. Okay. Um, have you gone through any of this? Did, are you going to pull this down or leave it this way? Yeah, right now, now it's going to stay as it is. Um, you know, I found one of the uh, manifolds has a hairline crack in it. 
Um, you know, so I'm just making a lot of notes right now of what's damaged. I do have a backup motor mm -hmm. on standby so we can bring the car back to life just a little bit faster. But and in time, you know, we've got the original piece here and it'll probably see itself back in the car in the future. And I know I saw an Edelbrock box back there, so you probably put it back together with an Edelbrock carb. Mm -hmm. Take this off, restore it, mm -hmm. everything on here. It's all here. It's like this car, oh, yeah. until it stopped running, it was like it never broke down. Everything is all original on mm -hmm. it. I mean, yeah, I'm just all blown away. all clamps here, all the kick down gear, and, and these are all special. You know, these springs are on purpose, you know, yeah. there's a certain tension. And, you know, they're not just something you buy at Ace Hardware. You know, the car survived a nice long time and gave them a good time. And, uh, you know, this is the end of life uh, with a uh, big block engine like this. You can see it's original oil and dirt that, you know, the car accumulated over the many yeah, years. Yeah, it is. It must have been a couple of oil leaks here and there. Because yeah. this thing is definitely a little, you know, the car is rusty. This is crusty. Mm -hmm. This is uh, not what we were expecting. But again. It's life, life in the big city. This car, as we saw from the ET slips, this car was raced almost since new. As soon as it was broken in, yeah. he was dragging it a quarter mile at a time. Mm -hmm. Awesome, and it's all original matching numbers type stuff. Yes, yeah, original I mean, 383, original heads, original manifolds. Yeah, block yes. numbers all here. The mm -hmm. numbers are on the side of the exhaust manifolds. This mm -hmm. is just- Yeah, the Holly's original to the car, so I'm gonna rebuild it to use on the backup motor. Wow. Because I'm kind of excited to see the car operational. And so we're going to take a few original components, refurbish them, put them on our temporary 383 Magnum, and mm -hmm. that's what's going in the car. And we'll have some fun with that. Oh, man. You know, I just love coming in here, grabbing onto the tough steering wheel. But it's so cool. Air conditioning. I love the way the dash is laid out. They really did a much better job, I think, on these 71, 72 dashes than they did 68 to 70. Although they were both complete. Again, we talk about things that are unique. 383 Magnum engine, and there's a clock where the tack should be. That's okay. But here's what I like, the microphone. So I can dictate messages. All I need is some cassette tapes. Um, there's just funny stuff here. Like I said, I would have ordered a console. I would have ordered a floor shifter. I'm not much of a, a column shift guy. Now that we're finished with the inside, Let's go take a look at the trunk, see how it looks inside. Chris, I noticed there is, probably this is about the worst part of the car back here. There's mm -hmm. some some surface rust on the trunk, there's some deep rust in here. Mm -hmm. I mean, it comes all the way up into here. So you've yeah. got your work cut out for you back here, don't you? Yeah, we sure do. And you know, that's, that's typical cars that begin their life outdoors, you know, living life and being a Kentucky car. They're not heavily salted roads, you know, like you would find in like Ohio or New York or other places like that. So we did occasionally see some salt life and you know drainage issues and uh, caused a little bit of rust but you know these are very easily repaired i say that easy but it's still you know a lot of tedious work we've got a little bit to do with the extension on the trunk here the main body of the trunk is fantastic it's all very topical and easily repaired and we can make that look real nice again too and you can see this is the original f7 color mm -hmm. uh inside here and uh so all the fixtures are still in place you know for the lights and the marker lights and things like that so uh part of this uh preliminary work we're doing with the car we're going to replace this extension on the trunk and also do all the repairs to the quarter panel as well too and eliminate the issues it once had you know when we talk about this car being a little crusty and a little rusty or is it rusty and then crusty there are parts like this on the deck lid typical of old cars that you know they just accumulated water back in the day and not much else you can do about it i mean it's just part and parcel for restoring an old car uh the good news is when you're all done you've got a really really good looking car unlike if you restored say a toyota corolla which really best way to restore one of those is to put it in a car crusher all right everybody we're wrapped up here today at iron stable garage in largo florida we really, really dig this Charger, and we can't wait to see what it looks like when he gets it running again. There's a lot of solid sheet metal on this car, so it won't take a lot to get it back and running and on the street again. Chris has all the parts he needs to make that happen, either OE parts that came off the car or some late model restoration and performance parts to keep it rolling. We'd like to thank Chris for inviting us over for part one of the Rusty Krusty Charger video series. Thank you.